I've taken some time to reflect on this. If I had to guess, Professor Cyrus came to the desert knowing that he would almost certainly never return. He's a stubborn man who tends to double down when he feels strongly about something. We won't get anywhere trying to convince him to escape. I agree. My master Nephis says the same thing. Once Cyrus makes up his mind about something, he won't listen to reason. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's one thing. A few other things come to mind, too. You've heard all you need to hear about the Temple of Silence. So on that, I don't have anything to add. My own memories of this place are hazy, though. Probably something to do with the overpowering presence of the Ba Fragments. Hmm. That might explain why I suffered from constant headaches and fevers as a child. I do remember having some fleeting moments of profound emotion when vague images would appear in my mind. But I don't recall much, only bits and pieces. I was still young then, and all I could understand was that there was a strong will inside my mind. <sighs> Thinking back on it now, I suppose it was Herma Nubis' way of trying to encourage me, even if we couldn't communicate. The power that came to inhabit my spirit was probably one of the cornerstones of their whole faith. So if the will and might of Herma Nubis is a real and tangible thing, and they are its rightful worshippers, then... You're not gonna give in to their demands, are you? Surely there has to be another way! No. I have no intention of returning it. I need this power to protect Sumeru. But the temple has the right to make the final decision over its fate, since it belongs to one of the seven pillars of King Deshret. So I will challenge them head on, and win the right to wield this power for myself, fair and square. Hmm... This reminds me of something Alhatham mentioned to me just before we left. He said that the Temple of Silence was originally founded by the ruling elite of the day. Traditionally, such organizations are bound by a strict and ancient code of nobility. Kave has made similar observations about the desert tribes from his work trips there. He says many of them have their own internal rules. They talk about the importance of never dishonoring their tribal bonds, or the rules laid down by their ancestors. I think we could turn that to our advantage. Go back to them with a proposal of our own. Wow, and just like that we've turned the tables on them! Looks like we have the same idea. Turn it back on them now while we still can. In terms that they cannot refuse. That's how we win this. Great. And I know just how to start the conversation. Let's go find Sethos. We'll tell him that I know a thing or two about medicine and would like to take a look at his grandfather's condition. Sethos, let's talk. Have you made up your mind? We'll get to that, but first, I have some degree of medical training, so I was wondering if you might let me take a look at your grandfather? I have no objections, although we do have our own doctors here. I doubt you'll be able to tell us anything we don't already know. Hmm, only one way to find out. Follow me. Keep your voices down. We don't want to disturb him. Hmm. Let's talk outside. Bamoon has fallen into a deep coma, and his prognosis is quite grave. I'm sure that your physicians have come to the same conclusion. He appears to have sustained a serious injury in his youth, which has been exacerbated over the years by the heavy burden of work and now by the effects of old age. Regretfully, I must inform you that, based on what I've seen with patients in a similar condition, he doesn't have long left. A few days at most. Yeah. I've known for a long time. You're his heir, aren't you? 
You clearly have a lot of respect for the man, but you also see things differently. You have a broader range of concerns and a more pragmatic approach. So tell me how we can end this on your terms. Let's find a way to bring all this to a resolution while Bamun is still alive to see it. That's what really matters to you. I know it. Yeah, there's no time to waste here. You know that better than anyone. <sighs> you know, the two of you are actually in a very similar predicament right now. Both of you have a very different perspective from the men who raised you. Right. And you didn't create this situation. They did, but somehow you've ended up having to make the tough decisions. You're right. We both look at this problem very differently than the people we inherited it from. I accept, Sino. This all began because of Hermanubis. So let's end it with the right he himself created. Legend has it that when Hermanubis first arrived in Tuletula, he sparred with the city's residents. He and his two companions proved their mettle by fighting over several days, winning the support of many fine people. That group of supporters were some of the first members of the Temple of Silence, and the sparring matches were enshrined as one of our founding rites, the right of duels. That's where it all began. Sounds very fitting. I'm in. As a fellow vessel of Hermanubis, your ties to the Temple of Silence run deep. So I will permit you to participate in this rite, along with your chosen companions. Three against three. Sounds good. However, I have some additional terms. As the challengers, you must win all three of your fights to win. And Sino, both of us must put our Ba fragment on the line. The winner takes them both. Letting Cyrus leave with one of the Ba fragments was a mistake, made by my grandfather out of pity. It is a long-standing issue that must be addressed for the Temple of Silence to move forward. I can make no concessions on that front. None needed. We're on the same page. If I win, the Temple of Silence must release Cyrus and consider this past dispute resolved. If you win, I'll return my power to you. It's a deal. Then let's meet at the ceremonial hall tomorrow evening, eight o'clock. Well, after how that went, there's definitely no turning back now. There never was. Turning back hasn't been an option for me since the moment the professor slipped away to return to the desert. You have to win. You need this power, both as General Mahamatra and for yourself. Yeah, that's right! Besides, it stayed with you ever since you were a small child. Surely that's a sign it thinks of you as its rightful owner. <laughs> both as General Mahamatra and for myself. Yeah, when you put it that way, I've had to overcome a lot to tame this power and claim it for myself. Not everyone could have done that. Exactly! The Traveler and I will never lose. And neither shall I. The desert was home to an ancient and great civilization that for a variety of reasons fell out with the civilization of the rainforest. It's just as Dia said. Prejudice has pushed people apart. But there must be personal factors at work here, too. I can't shake the feeling that Bamun cares for many more things than he lets on. And I don't think that Sethos is any kind of villain. He's just doing what he thinks is best. <sighs> Tomorrow, everything will be resolved.
gather on this day to perform once more the rite of duels with the greatest of all sages, Lord Herman Nubis, as our witness, for his power and authority is present in our midst. This is our most sacred of ceremonies, and no disruption from the audience shall be tolerated. It is incumbent upon all to observe the duel with the utmost respect and reverence throughout the proceedings. Representing the Temple of Silence, the Defenders. Grandfather, you're here. <coughs> A rite of duels after all these years. I am surprised by your decision, Sethos. I know what I'm doing, Grandfather. Just leave it to me. Representing the Academia, the Challengers. Ready. We will fight to have our voices heard. Warriors, take your positions and decide on the order of battle. We come not to debate what brings our Challengers here, nor what will become of the defeated duelists. Duelists, the might of Herman Nubis himself is at stake here. Now, fight. Fight until the rightful victor is proclaimed. Huh? Are you sure? I agree. He's very strong. Sending him out first will definitely intimidate the opposing side. Okay, then you're second. Sure. We have decided. So have we. Let's begin. Duelists of the first bout, please step forward. Don't forget, safety first! <laughs> hey, you there! You better play nice with him or Paimon will make you regret it! A little bit too much chatter from the audience over there. A swift end to the first bout. I now invite the duelist of the second bout to please step forward. When you're both ready, you may begin. Let's begin. Watch out! Go, Trinity, go! He drank plenty of water before the bout, so he should be fine. And shroud! I hear everything! Thus ends the second bout. We will now move to the third bout. Duelists, please step forward. I'm ready. So am I. This is the final stage of the rite. I remind you both that the terms you agreed upon in advance are binding. When you're both ready, you may begin! I am Sethos, vessel of Herman Ubis, grandson of Bamun, the leader of the Temple of Silence. For many years, we have kept our covenant with Lord Herman Ubis by guarding the secrets of King Deshred. And even in our darkest hour, when we could not see a way forward, we chose not to abandon hope, but to embark on a brave new experiment so that we might prevail. We earnestly sought Lord Herman Ubis's wisdom and power Longing to see his spirit and his light descend upon us. Now, I will fight to become the rightful wielder of that power. I am Sino, General Mahamatra of the Academia, student and successor of Cyrus, the Sage of Spontamon. I fight in defense of my power, my professor, and my nation. 
And you. I think you left some things unsaid. This is a sacred duel. And Hermanubis is watching. So bear your soul. <laughs> Everyone. Old and young. Fit and frail. They're all waiting to see how this duel will end. My grandfather is a wise leader. He is also known to be a ruler who is not afraid to get blood on his hands. I understand his beliefs well. And I know what he expects of me. But our faith has held us back for too long. After I grew up, I went to the rainforest once. And I saw for myself the people of the city. Times have changed. The people of Sumeru are happier and more free now than in the past. I thought about this as I stood at one of the tallest points in the city, gazing down at the streets below. Then I thought of you, Sino. You and I both wield the same power, yet the lives we lead could not be more different. Each Ba fragment of Hermanubis stands for something different. Might. Glory. One of many other secrets that have yet to be revealed. I once thought that the nature of our fragments must be what makes us so different from one another. But, maybe, it's that you've found your answer. And I am still searching for mine. I am more than just a warrior. I am my own person. Exactly. <sighs> the name Hermanubis has left its mark on both of us. Shaped the course of our lives. We are his vessels. And yet we are more besides. So show me your answer, Sino. Show me I can be more than my faith. More than the power I wield. Show me the person I can become! Bring it on! That's all you've got? What happened is searching for your answer. It's over. Do you yield? <sighs> you won. Well then, looks like you found your answer. give his glory to you.
the light of our Lord, the great Hermanubis, priest over all other priests. His spirit dwells within that lightning, and his will lives on. Once a warrior of Tynar, he emerged from the barren desert sands to serve the god king Al Ahmar. After the death of the god king, Hermanubis gathered his followers and the Tynarian priests and led them to the city of Tule Tula. There, they founded the Temple of Silence. And from that day forth, we became stewards of all knowledge that survived from King Deshret's civilization. Barely a century passed before war ravaged the desert. One by one, Aramite leaders took up arms against each other in battles that would devour what little remained of their civilization. Only the wise city of Tule Tula was spared under the guiding hand of the Tynarians. But peace did not last. Coveting the knowledge of King Deshret, the beasts set their eyes on Tule Tula. The King of Gurabad laid siege to the city and ordered the sages to surrender to him the Temple of Silence as proof of his victory. The ruling elite colluded with their oppressors, betraying the temple so as to hold on to their rule over the city. They declared that the knowledge guarded by the temple was the true cause of corruption. These were dark days, and we faced enemies on all sides. Our Lord had long since exhausted his strength keeping the forbidden knowledge introduced by King Deshret at bay. To ensure the temple's continued survival, he broke his being into many pieces and began the ceremony of Hermanubis' legacy, bestowing his power upon his mortal followers. With this power, the temple was able to defeat the tyrant's army. Yet, we were not hailed as heroes. Strange and unfamiliar as this power was, it struck fear into the people's hearts and drove them to reject us. In the end, the people of the temple and the Tule Tula Tynarians left the city for good and made their way to the rainforest. What followed next was inevitable. The elite of Tule Tula fell and were decimated. War engulfed the desert. And we wandered from place to place, always in hiding, all the while keeping close watch over our secrets and staying true to our mission. Betrayal forced us out of the desert and into the forest. Then mistrust drove us from the forest into the desert once more. We have lived in exile for far, far too long. Yet, today, the Temple of Silence has borne witness to the glory of Hermanubis once more. Thank you. Grandfather. Hey, Setho. 
Kratos. You'll get through this. I know. I just... I'll miss him. I guess you were prepared for this. It's been a long time coming, huh? Yeah. Uh, he's been on death's door for a very long time now. I think it was only through sheer willpower that he managed to hold on at this point. At least, he was able to see this chapter come to a close before he passed. What's next for you? Per my grandfather's last wishes, the Temple of Silence should submit to whoever possesses the largest number of Hermanupus fragments. That entitles you to be our new leader, Sino. <sighs> but that's never going to work. As I'm sure you realize, I'm the General Mahamatra. I am needed back at the Academia. I did foresee this possibility, and I gave it some thought. The fact is, I know next to nothing about the staff, records, and environment here. As such, I am ill-suited to be your leader, Sethos. I believe the honor should go to you. Were it not for this duel, or indeed if you had other intentions, the Ba fragments would most likely be in your hands by now. I'm sure Ba Moon never meant for anyone but you to be his successor. <laughs> you really think so? I do. Still, I didn't think Ba Moon looked very surprised by the final result. Perhaps he had an inkling that this would be the way things end. Well, in any case, since the Ba Fragments are with me now, I guess I can call the shots. Sethos. I would like you to succeed Ba Moon as the new leader of the Temple of Silence. You are more suited to the role than I, and I have complete faith that you will be an excellent leader. Just think of it as doing me a favor. Uh, but doesn't that render everything that we've been through up to now meaningless? <laughs> no, it doesn't. This experience has allowed us to become friends, which means that the Academia and the Temple of Silence will become partners once more. That's a much bigger deal than you might think, Sethos. You said yourself, times have changed. You have to believe that things can change for the better here at the Temple too. I will try. To be honest, I couldn't have asked for a better outcome. Actually, part of me wonders whether Ba Moon's intentions from the very beginning was just to create enough pressure to force us towards a duel. That way, no matter who won, one of us would have to surrender our Ba Fragment, and the power of Herman Nubis would be concentrated in one single person. Had you won, the Temple of Silence would have doubled its strength. And were I to win, he correctly anticipated that I wouldn't suddenly drop everything to become the leader of the Temple, much less integrate the Temple into the Academia by force. He knew that the Temple's future would depend not just on the guidance of Herman Nubis, but the support of the Academia too. So he made it his responsibility to ensure his successor would be free from the burdens of the past. His plan meant that whoever ended up succeeding him, they would have an easier time interacting with the Academia. <laughs> with one single letter, he lured out the Professor. No matter what happened after that, it would result in a net benefit to the Temple. And here I thought the General Mahamatra wouldn't care for all these trivial details. You're absolutely right. Grandfather and I considered this from every angle. We had to find a way to mend our relationship with the Academia. In that sense, the right of duels was just a means to an end. Thank you for everything, Sino. As a gesture of our gratitude, to those that you and Lesser Lord Kusanali deem worthy, I will grant the honor of access to the Temple of Silence for their pursuit of knowledge. The Temple of Silence has a wealth of information on King Deshret's civilization, more than any other organization in existence today. In times when you need information that only we can provide, we will be here to support you. But you must be exceedingly careful with your selection of candidates, lest you lead humanity to repeat the same mistakes. By the way, Tainari, my grandfather was so happy to see you. You are a descendant of the Veluka Shuna, and we are the heirs to the will of Hermanubis. The story goes that King Deshret chose the sage Hermanubis from among the Tynarians 
and appointed him as his familiar. He went on to fight many valiant battles with his Tynarian companions. They always stood by each other, from the founding of the Temple of Silence to the fall of Tuleitula. The Tynarians who left Tuleitula joined their human counterparts in the rainforest. A few centuries later, when some of the group returned to the desert, many of the Tynarians chose to stay and put down roots in the rainforest. In all likelihood, those were your ancestors. How fascinating. My father once mentioned that I was named after the Tynarians, but I never knew that my forebearers had such a history with the Temple of Silence. I like this story. Uh, by the way, has anyone seen Cyrus? Ah, uh, yes. Cyrus. You'll probably find him in my grandfather's room. He wouldn't show it in front of me, but I think he still has many fond memories of my grandfather. If it's true that you and your grandfather really planned for everything to turn out this way, then I guess he didn't really resent Cyrus as much as he appeared to. <laughs> Who knows? Perhaps all of us. You, me, and Cyrus. We're all just pawns in my grandfather's plan to set things straight. He was awful like that. Someone's got to make the decisions when history is at a crossroads. I will make a detailed report on all of this to Lesser Lord Kusanali, and arrange for an official delegation from the Academia to come and meet you in the desert. I'm sure you'll have lots to attend to in the days ahead. But once things return to normal, please come and visit the rainforest again. You should stay for a few days this time, and start to build some relationships. If we're going to work together, both sides have to get to know one another better. I will. All right, well... Bye for now, everyone. I'll be seeing you. See you soon. Come hang out with us anytime. <laughs>